you always in a hurry? Or do you think that your pace is just perfect for the race that you're in? Do you have a schedule that seems to always dictate what you have to do as opposed to what you want to do? Do you have those times when you can slow down, talk slower, not text as fast, not respond as fast, not act as quickly as you usually do? You know, instantaneous answers for immediate resolution of issues that resolve themselves whether we participate in them or not. Are you in a hurry? There's a song that Tommy Coombs once sang that says, Are you always in a hurry? Because it only needs to worry. There's a time for work and there's a time to play, to pray. Find a quiet place to seek his voice and hear, to seek his face and hear his voice. Can you hear the spirit calling? Come away. You know, and I used to sing a different kind of song. I used to sing, Slow down, you're moving too fast. You got to make the morning last just kicking down the cobblestones. Now that's the fun and feeling groovy. And you know, how do you feel about how fast you're going? Do you really feel like if you speed up, you get more done? Really? I read one time an old teaching by someone who said, you can get ahead of God and then you have to wait for him to catch up because you're out of his will until you're in the center of his attention. And I had to think about that for a while because <laughs> it sounds so odd to be ahead of God. But you see, you may know what God wants you to do. You may understand how he wants you to do it. You may even have a pretty good grasp on where and who and all the things that God planned for you. But you know sometimes the timing isn't quite right. And the reason is because God is patient where we are impatient. One of the things the scripture talks about in the Bible in the Old Testament is the hasty people. And I think really haste and waste go hand in hand that when we're in such a hurry we don't accomplish as much as we think we do but we do spin that cage wheel of the hamster that we are in and that we just constantly run thinking we're doing something when in reality all we're doing is working up a sweat. One of the things we're told about the Old Testament is that in the tabernacle because they were in the desert the priest wore silk and some people have said the reason why or wore clothes liniments that would not sweat was because God did not want our effort he wanted our praise and sometimes I think that's where the difference is in ministries that relax rejoice and really let God do his thing when all we need to do is stand and see the salvation God will bring Often, doing less is doing more if you're trusting in the Lord. Are you? You know, trusting in the Lord. Are you able to stop for a minute and to look around and just kind of appreciate what God has made for you today? Do you only do that on your vacations? And even then, you work at your vacation so that you need a vacation from your vacation. Do you slow down with your children? Do they rush you and do you rush them? Do you make your burden the tyranny of the urgent, carrying, as it were, the weight of the world on your shoulders because you think you have to hurry up to get where you're going in order to get done what you think you've got to do? There's a lot of G's there, but notice none of them are the big G not God. God does not appreciate our speed. He appreciates our patience. God wants us to have peace. In the world we would have tribulation, but Jesus said he was the Prince of Peace, that he could give us peace that passes all understanding. 
We don't find that peace moving in a hurry. We don't find that peace by running, as it were, the race we think we have to run. Because God has a pace that's going to last throughout eternity. It's going to take us far beyond any place that we ever imagined. He has the ability to turn back the sun, even as he did for Joshua, or hold it in its place, as he's done in the past. He can change time, or he can slow it down or speed it up. But the difference between what we do is how we act, how we react, and how we interrelate or intercourse with God. What direction have you chosen for your day and your life? Are you constantly setting a pace that's going to increase over the years to get faster and faster and faster? So that your body is dependent upon that speed, you know, the hype of a Mountain Dew, the, you know, amp up of amp drinks and power drinks, caffeine freaks, of, you know, putting yourself way over the top when it comes to energy levels. What if God doesn't want you to? What if Jesus would rather you walk than ran? What if your speech was so fast that even God says, hey, I don't want to listen because you don't have my ear. Because if you did, you would be slowing it down and thinking from where you're at, what you're saying to where I'm at. And then you would pay more attention to your words, your deeds, your actions, and your life. I wonder maybe if we took deep long breaths every now and then and let the spirit come inside to fill us once again with his direction and his love and his joy do you think maybe just maybe we would fret less do more quality than quantity, have more experience of seeing God, hearing God, wow, and knowing God. Maybe the reason you don't hear from God, you don't see God, and you don't know God in your day is because you run away from Him as soon as you woke up to Him. It is interesting that Jesus said, and the scriptures teach us, be still and know that I'm God. It doesn't mean be in a hurry. What it really means is, it's time you started slowing down.